All right. Good morning, everybody. Uh, let me apologize. I've been gone again for a week. Well, I didn't travel, but I uh, had a pretty busy week with work, and then uh, I got ill. And uh, I want to apologize for the hoarseness of my voice because I still have quite a bit of head congestion. I guess I'm suffering from the flu. So what I have for us today on this episode of What's in the Box is the brand new, just released uh, Hobby Boss 135th scale Soviet T28 medium tank, the early edition. Uh, and this kit has just come out. It's just been released. And I was lucky enough to grab this example from scalehobbyist.com. One of my favorite uh, online uh, hobby dealers here in the U.S. They have fantastic prices, and I encourage you to check them out. So, just some brief history of the vehicle. Don't want to bore you with a lot of background data. But uh, this tank was considered the first medium tank ever to be produced. Um, the first prototype was completed in 1931, and production of the vehicle began in 1932. Uh, it was used in combat. Uh, it was used in the invasion of Poland on the Russian side, of course, and was also used during the Finnish Winter War. Uh, surprisingly, the Russians lost 200 of these vehicles in the Winter War against the Finns, which is interesting. And the Finns used a few captured versions. That was very interesting. Uh, the gun, uh, the main gun, main armament on this vehicle was a 76.2 millimeter KT-28, basically a short howitzer designed for direct infantry support. But what was interesting was the number of Degtryev 7.62 millimeter machine guns located uh, around the vehicle and the two small turrets up front here. And then there was two, one on each side of the uh, main gun as well. So this thing was bristling with armament. Even though it was considered to be a medium tank, it only had uh, 20 millimeters of armor up front, although it, later it was uh, up armored. But they ceased using these things after 1941. Now, surprisingly, they built 503 of these uh, monstrosities. I was uh, kind of amazed by that. So let's go ahead and get inside the box. Or, well, let's, let, I'll tell you what. Let's go ahead and take a brief look uh, uh, at the box itself. And, of course, you have some really nice-looking box art. And then um, you have a brief description of the vehicle here. Just a brief history of the vehicle. It's kind of nice they provided that for us. On the back, on this panel, uh, more Chinese writing and then some pictures of, uh, you know, box, or some additional box art. And then, of course, it does come with a photo etch fret. So that's enough of that. Let's go ahead and get inside the box and see uh, what we have. I've got too much crud on my hobby desk here. I need to clear off some room. So we have the instruction sheet, I'll set that aside, advertisement, hate them or not, I think they're pretty cool, uh, a ton of plastic, a ton of plastic. So the advertisement, as you can see here, um, showing a P61 Black Widow, which is a nice kit, I've heard. They're selling separate T35 tracks. Uh, for the T35, which I have reviewed in a previous video. Here's advertisement for uh, the T28 itself. Some nice CAD drawings there. That's uh, that's nice. Thank you for providing that, Hobby Boss. And let's take a look at the instruction sheet. There's the color and marking guide. We have a black and white picture of the box art on the front of the instruction sheet. And let's zoom in a tad. Sorry, so you guys can see this a little better. I apologize, I'm fiddling with the... So, really nice looking sprue map here. Um, the parts are not numbered on the sprue map, but the actual sprues themselves are numbered, which is nice. Um, then we begin, begin construction, as we do with most armor builds, the road wheels and or suspension right into the hull assembly on step number two. This is going to be the bottom of the vehicle. These weird looking struts. Um, I'm not sure what these are for. For springs or perhaps attached to this. I remember reading this vehicle had a plunger type suspension system, which was one of its shortcomings, by the way. Here we begin attaching the road wheels to the suspension. They don't need, doesn't appear to be much in the way of suspension arms. Continue on with adding 
what appears to be more suspension or maybe drive components here. The sponsons are actually very odd. There's an engine cooling fan. That's a nice touch. Here we began adding um, the boxes on the superstructure of the, the hull, the top hull. A lot of detail here. Engine intake grills, that's where your photo etch comes into play. <clears throat> link by link tracks. Love them or hate them. We got them with this kit. Some really nice detail. These steps don't appear to be too bad here. There's not a whole lot going on per step. And we're up to step number nine. Step 10, um, spare road wheels. We can get down to step 12. And here's the assembly of... The uh, secondary armament turrets, your machine gun turrets. This turret looks a lot like the turret from the T-35. It looks somewhat like a BT-7 turret with the big, you know, you know, a cast-in star at the top of the vehicle. Uh, that's really nice. And it goes through step 14. And I can tell you this, just from the cursory look at the instructions here, that this kit is far simpler than the T-35 that they came out with, which is a monstrosity of a kit with thousands of parts. This kit is nowhere near that complicated. Just a brief look at the painting and marking guide. Simple, one color scheme. No surprise that it's the Russian um, 4B AU base color, which would be the pre-war color. It's actually a slightly lighter shade. Um, it was basically a primer that they made the vehicles in. This was before the war. That would be the appropriate color for this. And by the way, um, there's a really nice MIG Russian armor set that has that color in it. So it's called 4BAU Protector, I think is what it was. It was a a uh, primer color. And let's take a look at some plastic. And here we have fenders. Really crisp detail. Um, I will be zooming in so you guys can take a better look at this. Go ahead and zoom in for you a bit. There's that cooling fan I talked about. These turret boxes have some really nice detail on them. The fenders are a bit thick. It's to be expected in the scale and styrene me. They're way thick. But I don't know that much about this vehicle. I don't know if they're that accurate or not. There's where your engine air intakes are right here. Back out of skish. So there's that sprue. Some nice little filigree parts here. Alrighty. I'm sorry. I'm I'm still ill, so I'm not 100%. And the next sprue, we have some hull detail. These got to be side, yeah, these are side skirts. Nice detail on those, the see-through engine grills. You'll notice the sprue gates are here, so there shouldn't be um, very many marks to have to remove any um, ejector pin marks. There are some here on the back side of this part, though. There's a tiny bit of flash, um, but it's on the excess part that's going to get cut away. Maybe just a little bit of flash on these side plates here, once you see that. Oops. Just a tiny bit of flash right here. Not a big deal though. I don't think that's going to be a problem at all. And let's see what else. Really clean looking sprue. All right. Let's go ahead and move on to our next sprue. This one I'm not going to remove from the bag. I think this is self-explanatory. Uh, by the way, this was one of the first Russian tanks to be included uh, with a radio, so I thought that was pretty unique. So this is an aerial. This goes around the turret. Looks very much like a BT-7. It's a radial aerial or antenna. And here we have the barrel for the main gun, which is kind of neat. It's all one piece. I'll go ahead and let you guys take a look at that. see the barrel here one piece so 
No, uh, there is a mold line you'll need to remove. That's just a simple matter of sanding away. That's not going to be a problem at all. And let's see. Sorry for that. Another antenna mount, perhaps. I'm not sure about that. A horn. Not sure for, but all these parts, nice and crisp. The detail is quite good. Track links, lots and lots and lots of track links. Um, but they don't appear to have any ejector pin marks. Nope, none to be found. So they clean up nice, uh, link by link. I don't know if these are workable or not. I don't think they are. It would be nice to have an assembly jig though. They're all, they are small. They look to be about the size of a uh, Panzer three, Panzer four tracks. So, which is not bad. Next brew, tons and tons of road wheels and some other detail parts. So really nice looking deck tree F machine gun. That's the DT machine guns. As far as the seven, six, two by five, four rimmed Russian cartridge. The detail in these road wheels is nice though. Um, there's actually four of these sprues. They're identical. I'm just going to show you one for the sake of time. I'll let you take a look at that. Look at the cooling jacket detail on that uh, Degtoryev machine gun. It looks very, very nice. The bolt and rivet detail on these wheels is quite good. Let you guys take a look at that. It's really a really nice looking kit. I don't have any complaints so far. No flash really to speak of. Another sprue of the road wheels, those are identical. And then we have the little turrets. And there's four of these things, wow. These are the little machine gun turrets that uh, go in the front of the vehicle. I don't remember there being any on the back. I mean, they, maybe there were, no, it's just the two. So this may be borrowing um, from the T-35 kit as well. I'm guessing anyways, let's set that aside. Next sprue. Um, Drive components, hatches, uh, tools. There's a nice looking spanner for adjusting track tension. The drive sprocket, sprockets look exquisite. You guys can see that here. The tooth detail. There's some really nice fine bolt and rivet detail on these as well. They look really good. No complaints at all. Very crisp molding. Look nice. You can guys see the underside of that as well. And here we have main turret. Let's go ahead and line these out. They've actually put the uh, turret and other pieces in a little separate compartment here. You can see that. That's kind of nice. There's a very small decal sheet and then some photo etch here as well. And what else do we have? I'm going to go ahead and set that aside. So the turret. Let me zoom back out for you just a bit. Turret the one piece around. That's nice that so there's no seams there. So you're just going to put uh, that piece on top. Looks really good. Not a lot of detail on it. I don't see any cast texture or any weld seams to speak of. There's some locator pin marks or location marks. That's nice. Whole top. Um, there is some nice looking rivet detail here. I'm going to share this with you guys. I'll let you take a look at this. Oops. Some nice looking fuel access hatches here. This is what at least I'm, I'm assuming that's what that's for. Some nice fine bolt and rivet detail along these hull, along the hull here. It looks really nice. 
check out the teeth <laughs> um, for the um, turret rings. You know, the turret drive, you know, gear teeth. That's really cool. I can't believe they did that. That's really neat. It's a big haul. That thing is a little longer than a Panzer IV. One piece hull tub with uh, weird looking sponsons. There is some nice uh, bolt and rivet detail on the bottom of this. They've also included a nice copper tow cable. You guys can see the tow cable right there. That looks good. Final engine grill part here. Also nicely detailed. No flash, crisp molding. Here's that turret top that I told you about and the turret bottom. I like this, the way they did that, because uh, you don't think you're going to have to do uh, worry about any seam lines. So you can see the big Russian star on top of this. The T-35 kit, by the way, is just like that. So, I hope uh, you guys got a taste of what that kit was like. Um, oh, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Um, here is a photo etch fret. Very basic. Um, looks like fenders, maybe tiny bolts and rivets. Oh, God, I hate those. Yeah, a little bolt. Oh, there's even more in the back. There's quite a bit of photo etch for this kit, guys. There's a machine gun sight. These look like straps. I'm not sure what all those go to. And then, of course, a very, very simple decal sheet. Very simple. Not even any stars. Just two red lines. That might be something you might actually attempt to paint yourself. Who knows? Um, yeah. So, that completes, uh, I think, a pretty concise look at the sprues of the kit. And once again, I apologize. I'm not myself completely. I'm still ill. I uh, hope you guys are patient with me. But thanks again for tuning in. And I hope you enjoyed this review. And uh, I'll see you next time for What's in the Box. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.